Welcome, my friends. You're listening to the voice of the Eternal Gospel, a program brought to you by the Eternal Gospel Ministry, founded in 1992 by Seventh day Adventist believers. This is a Christian program dedicated to bring you the prophetic fulfillment, warning, and revelations of the end times, and to promote the advancement of Christ in your life. Welcome back, my friends, to the voice of the Eternal Gospel. I'm Pastor Rafael Perez, and I want to invite you to pray with us today. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you again for giving us this great blessing to be part of thy people in this end time. Help us to keep in the narrow path, just partaking of this great uh, doctrine, sound doctrines, the sound truth that will set us free, as you have said on John 8.32. Bless not only us, but thy people around the world. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Okay, uh, le- le- why don't we maybe conclude today with this, the good wine and the fermented wine that we have been talking. We saw something very interesting, though, uh, in the last program. And I hope that we help many of people that have been confused. We saw that Revelation 17 is not describing the pagan Rome. It's describing a, a Romish system that came out of the pagan Rome. And we gave some arguments, some reasoning for that. Do you remember some of them, Brother Pache? Revelation 17, verse 1, John is visited by one of the seven plague angels. Which will be taking place at the end time, right? Right. Yes. Okay. And, he, and that same plague angel will later show him a new Jerusalem coming down from heaven right. in Revelation 21. Right. And so we know Reve- the new Jerusalem coming down is not taking place in pagan Rome's day. And Pastor Barry, you yeah. brought also some other reason why that could not be applied to pagan Rome, but to the Roman church, right. the system. The, the re- not, not, the, not the good people, not the children that God has in there. Talk about the system, please. Okay. Right. That we're dealing with the system because of the fact that the Bible brings out very clearly and that it says mystery upon our forehead was a name written. Mm-hmm. Pagan Rome never had a forehead with her name written anything on it. Mm-hmm. But it says here, mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and the abominations of the earth. And then John says another thing that's very interesting. You know, even though pagan Rome also slaughtered and had its martyrs during for the first 10 years yeah, that's true. under Diocletian, yeah. we find that, that that papal Rome also had great persecutions of those who dissented from her teachings and doctrines. Uh, longer than the longer than, longer than, than, than the longer, pa, pa, longer than pagan Rome. Than pagan Rome, right? right. That, over a thousand years. Over a thousand years, okay. right? And they claim, and this is why they, this is what the Bible's bringing out. In fact, the Bible brings out that this power went into perdition and came back. Mm. Pagan Rome has not come back. Mm. But Papal Rome, that ruled as a successor of Pagan Rome, was wounded and did come back. Mm. It was the, the system. The continued. system, the system continued, right. Mm. Because it talks about yeah, the beast yeah. that thou sawest was and is not, but a sense out the bottomless pit. And shall go into perdition, and and all that dwell upon the earth shall wonder, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the fo- book of life. I'm sorry, it says from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. Mm-hmm. All right, this is not referring to pagan Rome. This is referring to papal Rome. Yes. When you talk about that, that receive a deadly wound. The, Can you? The deadly, a few seconds. The only. deadly wound was the. Um, the taking away of the papacy's political power in 1798. Mm-hmm. That was the deadly wound. Mm-hmm. And General Berthier, they turned the Vatican state, the Vatican, uh, they took away the papal states mm-hmm. and made them, uh, turned the whole thing into a republic. Mm-hmm. And therefore the Vatican lost her political power. The Pope that, of that year was taken into exile and he died in Villains, France in 1799. Pope mm-hmm. Pius VI, I think it was. Right. But, yeah, uh, that's right. Yeah, but at the same time, 
we find that the Bible foretold that her deadly wound will be healed and all the world will wonder at the beast based on Revelation 13, 3. And what we see today after a couple of hundred years is that everybody now admire and follow after the system. That's right. Brother, you're going to say something to Well, in Revelation 17, 8, it says, The beast that thou sawest that was and is not shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, go into perdition, and they that dwell on the earth shall what? Wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. This is almost a exact parallel with Revelation 13, verse 3, and uh, verses in another verse there before verse 10, and it's describing the beast. Mm -hmm. The pagan Rome is the dragon in chapter 12, but papal Rome is the beast in Revelation 13, 1 through 10, that receives its power its see in great authority from pagan Rome. Right. And also, um, something that we should mention, pagan Rome didn't have a cup yeah. on the hands. This says, use a, 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 a golden cup. Their leaders are tired with a scarlet color. Right. Scarlet and purple. Purple. I mean, why? I, I don't know. I don't know mm -hmm. Plus a woman. how more clear the God on his mercy is speaking to us in clear language. A woman always represents a church. Okay. It's not, not an empire. Yeah, not an empire. Okay, that's, that's another argument. Yes, my brother. When you look at this, it says in Revelation 17, 4, and a woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and, and has in deck with gold and precious stones. When you break down the issue... Why is it saying purple and scarlet? First of all, purple is the color of kings in the Bible. And scarlet is also a color, but it also has a symbolism to it. Mm -hmm. Now, scarlet is represented by, you know, red. But at the same time, red as a symbol can be represented bloodshed. But mm -hmm. let's take a little closer at this issue. Mm -hmm. Go to uh, Isaiah 1, 18 and 19. Okay. It says there... Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. And though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Red is a symbol of sin. Mm. The only other being in the book of Revelation that's connected with red in the truest sense of the term is Revelation 12 about the great red dragon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the red dragon and the harlot woman have something in common. Mm -hmm. Both believe in the transgression of God's law. Either the changing of God's law, the altering of God's law, or the doing away with God's law. But nevertheless, they believe in they, they are connected with red as a symbol of transgression of God's law. Mm. All right, though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be whiter than snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Mm. Red is a symbol of sin. And so what is sin? 1 John 3, 4. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. So what is red a symbol of? The violation of God's law. Here is a woman, a harlot woman, who professes to follow Christ, but yet at the same time violates God's law and thinks to even change times and laws. Okay, so, okay, so let's move along then. Um, and, and, and by the way, the reason that we are putting all this together is for us to understand why God had to bring his wrath of indignation, the wine of his wrath of indignation, because these institutions, this whole world has been drunk with a counterfeit wine. There is a good wine, as we explained in previous program, the, the pure doctrine, the pure gospel, but Satan has introduced through institutions, through people, a counterfeit wine, a fermented wine. And that's what we're trying to expose. Now, yes. should we uh, move on on Revelation 15 then? Uh, of, because there will be a group of people that will, not, that will not be partaking of this wine. Okay? And they'll be singing a song of victory. It says, the song of Moses, 15, 3. Uh, Revelation 15, 3. Do you have it, brother? Um, 
And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Why, why this has to be mentioned over here? They, they make a comparison with the son of Moses. What, 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 what does the son of Moses, what is the importance of the son of Moses? The people. Do you remember? Moses, sure. led, Moses led his people out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Out of bondage mm -hmm. and through the Red Sea to the through the wilderness to the promised land. Okay. To the borders of the promised land. And they were able to sing the song of Moses. And the song and the lamp. Sung, the song was sung uh, as they crossed the Red Sea. And the song of the lamp, he says. Yeah. Who is the lamp over here? That's Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. They had the victory over the over the this verse, uh, verse two it says that yeah. Um, they that had gotten the victory over the beast and over the image and over his mark and over the number of his name, standing on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. Um, this sea of glass shall look like a fire. You read it? Mm -hmm. Okay. It says, um, his image of the beast, and they send the sun. Verse, verse. Uh, 4, 2. Okay, verse 4, 15. Maybe. And who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy. For all nations shall come and worship before thee, for thy judgments are made manifest. Mm. So, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 11, verse 4, let's see in there, what color will the seed of glass? What, because that, remember just before people entered into the sanctuary mm -hmm. in the Old Testament, there was a, a, a how you call it, a labor? Labor. Right, yeah. with, with water. In heaven, that was a symbol, a, a, a type. But in heaven is a huge, before entering this multitude, or, or this, this group of people that had the victory over the over the image of the beast and all that, they are, they are now in front of the throne of God. Can you read, please, Deuteronomy 11.4? You uh, have it in there? Deuteronomy? Okay, 11.4 says, and what, and what he did unto the army of Egypt, unto their horses and to their chariots, how he made the water of the Red Sea to overflow them as they pursued after you, and how the Lord hath destroyed them unto this day. Okay. There was a sea that they had to... That was the Red Sea. The Red Sea. And when Moses crossed the sea and the people, they sent a song. Yeah. It was a song of what? Victory. Victory, isn't it? The same thing will happen to those who obtain the victory in the end time. They will sing a song of the victory. It's going to be the song of the Lamb. Because... Jesus also obtained the victory when he came, right, in, in, into this earth. And in Revelation uh, 15, uh, 2 that you, that you have it in there, can you read it, please, again? Revelation 15? 2, yes. Verse 2, and I saw... Oh, I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We'll come right back on that. Okay. We'll be right back. Find out what the critics are raving about. Top scholars and theologians from around the country come together to reveal the hidden history of the book of Revelation. With powerful reenactments and incredible visual effects, this 95-minute masterpiece brings to life the book of Revelation like never before. Revelation is no longer a mystery. Get your copy today. Welcome back. Welcome back. Brother... Patrick, can you read again Revelation 15, 2? Okay. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. It says, uh, mingled with fire. Um, what could that be representing? The Because fire... We read, we read in previous program in the book of Peter, he was comparing the, the fire with the, with the trials, 
with the persecution mm -hmm. that was going on. Could that be that these people that will be obtaining this victory would have to go through persecution too? We know they went through persecution already. Yeah. If they stand on sea of glass, they, they have already been through persecution. They have been gone through persecution, But, they, but right? they're, standing in a, they're standing in a fire that's not consuming. Mm. Okay. All right? This is a different type of fire. This is, this is the fire of God's presence. Mm -hmm. And they're able to stand in God's presence and not be consumed by the mm -hmm. fire. Mm -hmm. You remember when Lucifer was in heaven, mm -hmm. when he was in obedience to God, he walked up and down the midst of stones of fire. Mm -hmm. But when he became disobedient, God told him he was going to cast him out the mountain of profane. He mm. said, thou has walked up and down the midst of stones of fire. Mm. And that means he walked in the presence of God and was not being consumed by the glory of God. Mm. But in this case, we're going to find that the glory of God will be a consuming fire to the wicked, while at the same time, it is a shield of protection for the righteous. It glorifies right. God because they have his character. And, and because they have gone through the fiery trials of the image of the bee uh, and the bees and the mug of the bees and yes. they became, they went through victory over that time. Yes. Right? Yes. What else can we see here? Huh? Okay. Uh, what similar description is given of this victorious company? Uh, Revelation 13, 16, you want, to, you want to read it again, please? Revelation thir 13? 16, yeah. Um, verse 16. Yeah. It says, And he causeth all, both small and great, mm -hmm. rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Mm -hmm. So they, they had the victory, right? The victory over the mark of the beast. In Revelation 14, 3. Also, you can read, please. You want to read it quickly? 14, 3. Yeah. Okay, in 14.3, okay. the Talk Bible... Talk about the son of Moses. Saying, they son... And they son as, as it were, were a new song, song before yeah. the throne and before okay. the four beasts and the elders. And no okay. man can learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. From the earth. These are they that were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they that follow the Lamb wherever they go. Up. These right. are redeemed from among men, right. being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. So God is placing them in a place where there will be no consuming fire, no more... And this company went through the fire of persecution and they did not allow that persecution to consume their faith. You know, but I, it was all the opposite. They obtained the victory over the sin. They had made sure that they had confessed all their sins That's right. to God so there That's was right. no sin to consume. That's right. Okay. Um, and so there are two songs that they were singing. This, this company... Obtaining the victory. And that's what Revelation 15, 3 was talking about. You want to read it again, please? Revelation 15, yeah. verse 3, 3 says, that's right. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, mm -hmm. and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, mm -hmm. Lord God Almighty. Mm -hmm. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. That's right. In Exodus chapter 15, 1 through 4, if you want to go there, please, okay. quickly. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, and mm -hmm. spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for mm -hmm. he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and the rider hath he thrown into the sea. Mm -hmm. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him an habitation. Mm -hmm. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. So can we see the parallel over here? Mm -hmm. That those people that got brought out of Egypt through much trials, but at the end they were able to sing to sing the song of victory. They had the victory over the Egyptians, over you know brought them to the promised land. Now, likewise, we're going to go through all these trials in tribulation, but Jesus is going to introduce us to the real promised land, to Canaan, the heavenly Canaan. And Egypt that Moses brought them out of represents the house of bondage to sin. Amen, yes. And, and, yes. and that's yes. what Jesus wants in bringing us to heaven is to uh, give us victory over sin. That's the whole yeah. ball game of the Bible. Yeah, what was the, that new song? Okay, here that, we go. Pra okay, this that was praising, before we go there, mm -hmm. in Revelation 5, 8 and 9. Revelation the, 5. This new song, yes. Which is praising the Lord. 
It the, says, the, the lamb, praise in the Lord, five, eight, and nine. And when he had taken the book, the four yes. beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Mm -hmm. And they sung a new song, saying, okay. Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hath redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. So every redeemed person will acknowledge that the reason that they are going to be found is standing in the, in the, in the seat of glass is because the work, Jesus, the work of Jesus on our behalf. It, it, Again, that's why we say, even when we will be obedient to all of His commandment, it is because of what Christ, Christ already have done on our behalf. Greater is He that is in you than Amen. He that is in the world. Okay, brother. When you, when you look at this, when it says, "Who shall stand in the fire?" or "Who? Uh, why are they standing in fire?" Hmm. The question is asked in Malachi three two. It says, hmm. "Who? But who may abide in the day of His coming? Right. Who shall stand when He appeareth?" For he is like a refiner's fire. The word refiner means like a goldsmith who melts pure gold and, and purges the dross away from it. Mm -hmm. His glory is like fire, a refiner's fire. It says like fuller's soap. When you deal with the issue of fuller's soap, it means to, the word soap here means, fuller's means to trample. It includes, uh, it means to uh, go through a process mm -hmm. of to make fuller, and the word soap means uh, it means just it says just soap. It means like mm -hmm. vegetable or aki, mm -hmm. uh, something like that. But what basically what is bringing out clearly is that who's going to stand in the glory of God? Mm -hmm. You see, the wicked run to the mountains because they can't look at the glory of God. Mm -hmm. His glory. De Will, de will destroy anything that's around it that's in sin. Mm -hmm. So they run to the rocks and mountains. They say, hide us from the face and the sit upon the throne. But those of us who have his glory form within. Yeah, you're referring to Revelation 6, 19. Revelation 6, 19, right. Mm -hmm. And our, so those of us who have the glory of God form within, we have the, we, we are standing in God's presence, not because we are, are fireproof, mm -hmm but because we have the character of Christ seen in us in the Holy Ghost who can also be fire, right. confirms that we are, we are able to stand in the fire because we have the same righteousness, the same character as God's dear son. Again, by God's grace, by God's power, they were able to stand right. firm. In the Faithful. presence of God. In the presence of God. In the presence of God and stand on a sea of glass that's mingled with fire. Mm. They can stand in all that glory because they have the glory within. And, and, and because they, they have proven that through the grace of God, we can have the, the victory. Right. They have shown victory over sin, mm. victory over the flesh, Amen. victory over Amen. the devil. And through faith, they got victory over the world. Mm. Isn't this a good news? Yeah. This is a good news. I, I think that's, I think that's the greatest news that I, uh, that a human being can ever discover, that through the God's grace, we can obtain the victory over all this satanic host and sin, and and even our defects of character. Because let's face it, all of us are born, you know, with mm -hmm. with inheriting, inherit. Inherited sins and our own cultivated sins. But, but what sin. made them be able to stand was the, the Bible said they are before the throne of God. Mm -hmm. That's 144,000. Mm -hmm. And they are before the, they're without fault before the throne of God. Right. What allowed them to stand without fault before the, before the throne of God was the work of your high priest in the sanctuary. Amen. What did he do? What was the Bible said the, the issue in this plan of salvation was the issue of re removing or helping man to overcome sin. Mm -hmm. Sin was the major factor. Mm -hmm. Sin brought death on the planet through mm -hmm. Adam's transgression. By Adam's death, by Adam's transgression, mm -hmm. sin, death came upon all men. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus came and, and to bring life. Sin, right. And because of sin, Satan was able to 
introduced to settle his throne, yes. his, king, his kingdom down kingdom here. Right here. That's, that's and right most right people there. don't realize right. that we're not wrestling with flesh right. and blood, that there is spiritual wickedness down here. Right, right. So as a result of that, what does the Bible say? Does the Bible, what, how does God deal with, why are they standing on a sea of glass? What, where happened to their sin? What happened to their sin? I mean, they got forgiveness of their sins. That's true. Because you have a high priest. And this is my little children. If any man sin, he have an advocate of the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, who is a perpetuation for our sins, but not for our only, but for the whole world. But what happened to our sin? What happened to their sins? The now, they confess their sins, and Jesus received them. He took his blood to forgive them and pardon them. Mm -hmm. But in order for them to know that they have victory over sin and over the final victory over the devil, something had to be done to their sins. Mm. What had to be done? This is, I think, Patrick mentioned it earlier. Can you share with us what you found out earlier about that? Well, in the book of Leviticus, and like David, you go to the sanctuary and see the end of sin and sinners. Yes. And in the sanctuary... A sinner brought a lamb, which represents Jesus Christ. So the gospel is the same in the Old Testament as it is in the New. The law of God is the same in the Old Testament as in the New. And the sinner would confess his sin onto the lamb and then uh, slit the lamb's throat. It's, the priest would catch the blood because now the sin is off the sinner onto the lamb and in his blood. And the, and the lamb, Jesus, became sin for us. And he's also our high priest. And so the priest takes the blood and goes into the sanctuary and sprinkles it before the veil. And so the sin is transferred from the sinner to the sanctuary day after day, day after day, through the year until the end of the year when on the Day of Atonement, the high priest would make a final atonement. It wasn't complete at the cross. Okay. His work is just as vital for our salvation as his death on the cross. And he takes his, he sprinkles his blood on the sanctuary seven times. He walks out with all the sins of the children of Israel that have been deposited through the year and puts them on Satan's scapegoat where he is put into the wilderness and their sins are gone forever. Amen. And that, that the Bible calls it the, the blotting out of our sins. The, blotting the out eradication, of the finishing of our sins. That, that's the good news, my friend. And with that, with that good news, we're going to finish this program today, reminding you that Jesus, yes, Jesus, by his grace, not only can forgive our sins, but he can give us victory over those sins. So we can be found among the company, having the victory in the seat of glass in heaven. God bless you all. Our Voice of the Eternal Gospel family thanks you for joining us. Generous contributors like you keep us broadcasting. Prayerfully consider supporting this ministry. Donations are tax deductible and can be sent to Voice of the Eternal Gospel, P.O. Box 15138, West Palm Beach, Florida, 33416. Our phone number is 1-866-7th-DAY-2. That's 1-866-784-3292. And our web address is voiceoftheeternalgospel.com.